What's up everybody? Welcome to a little lesson here. Going over Save Ourselves from Kamira's self-titled record. Got a lot of requests for this one, um, specifically just the solo section recently and so I decided to start with that and um, just go over that a little bit, try to show some techniques, play it slowly later on, maybe you can pick up some things um, and uh, yeah, just we'll uh, have some fun with it, show some riffs and see what happens. <laughs> So let's get into it. Um, it's basically this beginning riff. I've actually seen a lot of variations of it, but what it what it incorporates really um, are these things, these flatted fourths. Okay, so when you're in a drop tuning like we're in, we're in drop C right now, C G C F A D, low to high. We're gonna hit this this D chord here. Two and two on six and five. Then we're gonna do the same thing on one, the first fret, on the fifth and fourth string. These are these chords called flatted fourths, and, and Kamira uses these a lot. They have this cool sound to them. The sound I like in a drop tuning. For some reason, in a standard tuning, they don't necessarily like like work as well. It's something about having your low string dropped. A uh, a whole step there. You know, even though it isn't even incorporated, it's just something about the dissonance or the interval between the drop and this these chords that I like the sound of. So anyways, opening riff. So that's the sixth and the fifth string, and the fifth and the fourth string. Into this guy. Three, three, four. Sometimes I screw up doing this stuff slow. I could do it perfectly a million miles an hour, but then when you try to slow it down. That's that look, let me get him. So all that is power chords on the sixth and fifth string until we get into the little splatted force. Same thing using the sixth string. Then so same thing all through there, just in three different keys. Okay, into the chorus riff here. See the picking alternates between each chord from and save ourselves. 
that riff right there, as easy as it is, whatever, it takes a lot of discipline to get that muting. A lot of the time you want to emphasize or accent certain chords. You want the muting still to be, or the, the up down picking to be uh, muted. All right, um, into, the, into the solo here. I like these little rake things a lot, and I use them a lot. So we're just in a, in a pentatonic box here, blues pentatonic. And I'm not a big scale guy. It's really the only scale like I, that I, I know, um, like what it is and all that, you know? Um, so we're just gonna rake along here. And I use that a lot, you know? It kinda sounds like a little sweep. I'm not a sweeper, not good at sweeping, but these are easy. Anybody can do these. If you play them all just at the same time, it's just more of a chord. But if you play them kind of one at a time and rake across each one, making each one stand out a little bit, that just takes a little practice. You can start little runs with it. Guy here. That's a cool little thing. I saw that trick years ago where somebody did it, you know, like live, and I was like, whoa, that's awesome. And I thought it was a good place to incorporate it here. these little guys the way those sound and it's just a harmonic on the fifth fret there I'm doing it on the bar of actually the real fifth fret here um, just trying to hit, hit the third and the second string together right on top of the bar and the third and second string together barely touching the strings give that cool sound So I like dive bombs like that. I also like the sound of just the open uh, fourth string here. Get that pretty nasty. In a lot of things here. Into the next riff. Um, Matt's harmonizing me, just four frets up. We use those harmonies a lot, just four frets apart. So if I'm playing this note, Matt might be playing this note, or vice versa. And those gives what we would always call the cannibal corpse harmonies. They just sound like bloody to me. So when if you have two guitar players, or if you're recording or whatever, just try some stuff. Do a little, do a little, uh, a little like lick. And do it four frets up. Play them together, and you hear how awesome it sounds. It's like this, like bloody, like death metal type type sound, you know. And you can do it all over the place. You can 
you can jump up too. Instead of just doing a four frets up, go eight frets and then 12 frets. And that's how we would do a lot of things. If we want stuff to sound like it's ascending or descending, maybe Matt's playing the same riff over and over again, I start 12 frets up for the, the, uh, the first measure. And then I go down to eight frets up from it for the second measure, or vice versa, going back the other way up. So just lots of cool stuff you can do with that. Just remember four frets apart. Then we just kind of close it out, and uh, I guess that's it. Um, I don't know if uh, I was hoping for some grand finale here, but uh, I think I pretty much covered everything. And if I haven't, again, um, just the point of this was just kind of like a more roundabout, just um, just kind of technique lesson, seeing things slow so you can just uh, kind of figure it out and put the stuff uh, to use yourself. So I hope everybody enjoyed this. I'm um, just trying to throw out a couple lessons here, get you guys going uh, while you're bored during this whole coronavirus thing, or who knows when you're watching this. Maybe that pandemic is over with and everybody's safe and happy again and back to normal life, and that's what I hope. So cheers, everybody. If you like this video, share it with your friends, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you are already, thank you so much. Check me out on the socials. Check out my Patreon campaign to help support these productions so I can keep going with this. Appreciate everybody's love and support so far. Cheers, and I'll see you on the next video.